Hello friends, welcome to my next tutorial on data wrangling tutorial series. The ultimate guide to data wrangling with Python using Rust Polish data frame to work with finance and supply chain data analytics. In first few videos we learned about Polish data frame and we created some dummy data for finance and supply chain. We also learned about data types, IO, context and expression. In today's video we are going to learn about Polar data transformation. I want to call out that you will find link to source code in video description below and you can reach out to me at github, twitter and youtube. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel for more videos. As I mentioned earlier in this notebook, we are only going to focus on Polish data transformation. Now this is a very important exercise as most of the real life data is never perfect and most of the time you will need to do a data cleansing. Now Polish data transformation tools are excellent when you are working with to transform massive massive data sets. All right, so this is the Jupyter Notebook from previous session. And if you recall, we did create finance supply chain data data model in the past. Now here in this notebook, we are only going to focus on four topics, joins, concatenation, pivot, and melts. And joins, as the name is very obvious, you have to know the strategy. For example, there are two different data sets and you want to join by some strategy, say inner join, left join, outer join. So I assume that you know what inner and outer joins were the differences. If not, please go through this documentation and it will help you out. But here in this scenario, let's go the data set I was referring to earlier, uh, I'm going to, you know, recreate the data frame. Uh, again, if you want to know where this came from, please watch my previous video so that it will be more clear to you. Just to recap, here I'm creating an accounts data frame with following fields, account, as of date, description, region, etc, etc. And if I run this, it creates 75 different accounts. All right, let me fix this. I think I need to import Polar SPL. Let me run this again. So now, as you can see, it creates the 35 different account with uh, nine or seven different columns here. Just like account, let's go create a couple of more uh, dimensions here. So just like account, as you can see, just to recall that account here is a number and there are other the attribute fields like as of date description. Similarly in department, I'm going to have, there will be a department ID, which is a numerical number and everything is an attribute. And the reason we are doing it like this because we don't want to store all the attributes into the main sales transaction register. So here, for example, there's a something called ledger data frame here. Now what ledger does, it has uh, physically our accounting period and dollar amount, and it refers to those values, those uh, data frames what we have created earlier. All right, so here the reason I created this because I want to show you how the join works. So let's take ledger data, ledger data frame, and I want to join this with the account number. So for example, right now in ledger register, there's only account number. You don't know nothing about what this account type is. So in that case, I'm going to uh, go back to the account data frame as you can see account number but you want to see what kind of account is this so then in that case you have to bring the attributes from the account data frame into that main uh, into another data frame so that's why that's where the join comes very very handy and here is a straight join is an inner join so i'm going to say ledger dot join and join the ledger to the another data frame called account on account. So account is the field which I'm joining it by, as you can see. So it, what it does, the syntax, it brings in all the ledger data values here and plus is going to bring in all the values from the account data frame. Now, similarly, suppose you want to see, uh, you want to join it for with department. So uh, let me just show you one more time. And here you can see DEPT. Let me change the department data frame, data frame to department here. Now, let me run this again. Let me come in this out, the first one. All right, so here, as you can see, the same data set what we have created ledger, now it is joined by department. And again, just to recall, because you know, you can cascade that, you know, the operation. So you can create multiple joins one after another. So another data for another example is location. So what I'm trying to tell you, you can have ledger join to account, join to department, join to a location. So you can have as many joins as you want. But you be plus be please be careful while using these operations uh, because you have to know your data. One wrong join like self join, outer join, anti join, semi join. So if you you have to experiment with the data, what kind of join strategy you want to apply on your data set. All right, so now let's go work on another thing called concat, concatenation. So simply, um, and here concatenation doesn't work like, you know, if you have an unequal data set. So for example, we have created account, department, location, and ledger uh, data frames. So let's go run the account.shape, department.shape, and you want to see, you know, how to concatenate. So there are three different ways you can cut, concatenate the data, vertical, horizontal, and diagonal. So let's look at this. So there are 35 accounts, 15 department, 12 location, and 100,000 ledger. 
pleasure. There's no match. I don't think you can, you know, concatenate just like that. Uh, I, I mean, the you know, because the it has to match the row values or the columns. One has to match, then only you can create a vertical or another data set. Let's take another example. So a ledger. So for earlier we created a ledger data frame, the hundred thousand rows, uh, and now we want to create another ledger, say of type budget. So as you can see, ledger dot shape equals hundred thousand. What I'm going to do? I'm going to copy paste the data frame what we have created uh, or create a dummy another set of ledger and instead this time i'm instead of actuals i'm going to you know just change the, change the type of the ledger type let me run it again so now we have hundred thousand rows of ledger hundred thousand rows of ledger budget so now you can cut concatenate that means you can join these two data sets now you have two different options i think because all the columns are same so you can you know um, you can join those two together uh, using horizontally or vertically but here in this case horizontal of course so df ledger equals to pl dot concat and as you can see concat it tells you, you know, uh, it, it, please read the signature of this concatenation function. It will tell you that, you know, how you can combine those two data frames. So for example, in this case, I'm combining ledger and ledger budget, ledger budget, but how? How means vertically. You can't combine those horizontally because fields are equal. So uh, if you want to combine horizontally, the number of rows has to be equal and columns has to be different. So in this case, because columns are same and, you know, uh, so you can, you know, rows can, can be different in this case. All right. So that's how, you know, now if you go run this df underscore ledger dot shape, you will see that we have now 200,000 different rows. So because now it's a concatenated data set. All right. df. Sorry if I can spell it right today. All right. 200,000 rows. So that's how, you know, again, it's very simple operations. Uh, that's how you can concatenate data, be, be, you know, please define there. Are another type of concatenation, horizontal, vertical, and diagonal. That's a little bit difficult. Again, depending on the data set, you can diagonally, um, you know, join uh, two different data sets. Let's move on to another operation. So similar to, now we learned about the join, we learned about uh, concatenation, now let's learn about the pivot. Now if you're familiar with Excel pivot, this is very, very useful uh, data transformation method. Often time what you want to know, you want to know, like you know, immediately you want to know some statistics of, of your data set. So you can perform some algebraic aggregations like first, sum, minimum, maximum, mean, medium, etc. cetera, uh, using pivot. There are two different pivot methods available, eager and lazy. And I will tell you, again, the difference, you know, is very, very, sim you know, simple. The lazy, when you are working with very huge large data set, please, you know, work with the lazy pivot. And I'll show you in a minute what it's mean. So here in this example, as you can see, I have a simple data frame with three columns, foo, n, and bar. And this is the actual example. It's from their documentation. And I'm going to use this example just to showcase what it does. So as you can see, you are pivoting on the index, the first column, say foo, on the other columns and then you are defining your aggregation. So uh, this is the example from their you know, data set. So as you can see what it is, it created a pivot table on the columns, um, uh, on the columns say bar and based on the index foo. Now let's go back to our data set and see if we can apply the same pivot methods here, how does it behave? So here in this example, for example, I want to, you know, so think about it, how do you want to index it? So I want to see my data by physical year. Say so year wise, I want to see monthly, year wise monthly, and you know how the network is distributed, how your dollar amount is distributed each month in a given year. So that's why I'm saying balance sheet dot pivots and my index column is physical year, columns equals to period and values equals to net worth. Again, you can see, you can use the value, say asset or liability, whatever. But here, as you can see, very evenly, very quickly, you can see how my dollar amount is distributed and uh, for you know for each accounting period for each month in a given uh, physical year so this comes very very handy here uh, especially you know uh, you when you are working with huge 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 data sets now, if you're working with the huge, huge, huge amount data set, for example, uh, you're working with a 200 trillion rows. In that case, always apply the lazy execution. So again, the difference between eager pivot and lazy pivot is la lazy pivot is just doesn't delay. It, it first is work on the execution plan of their query and then it executes. So you same syntax. The only thing is you just apply dot lazy function method and then followed by dot collect. So what it will do, it will give the rushed Polish data frame, give a chance to create an optimized execution plan for your query. 
So it obviously, if you use this lazy results, it's going to be very, very faster than your eager execution. So again, similar results, as you can see, same thing you will achieve. Um, it's a syntax is same. The only thing is, is uh, now your polar expressions are using lazy, lazy pivot. That means lazy execution. So now let's move on to the last topic, melts. So melt operation is just to think about like, you know, I'm pivoting a pivot table. So again, it's very, very, you know, uh, so in pivot operations, what do you do? You just like, you know, define the index on certain columns and you want to distribute the dollar amount in the horizontally. And unpivoting is just the reverse of, of that. So let's see that example. Again, this is the same example from their data uh, from the Rust Polar data frame library documentation. So in this example, as you can see, you have four columns, say A, B, C, D, and you are seeing the numbers by this. Now, what you want to do, you want to say, um, you want to melt it. That means you want to unpivot the number. So in that case, and let's take a, go back to our example, say balance sheet data frame. So earlier we saw by physical year, by accounting period, and uh, we, we were seeing the dollar amounts here. So when you do use the world, so uh, instead of using, using, you know, having the accounting period in the horizontal format, what it's going to do is going to just uh, like, you know, put this in vertically altogether. So again, once you run this, it will be, so if you look at this example, see how your dollar amounts are distributed by one, two, three, four, and those are in different columns. All it did, it wrapped everything all together and it put it in, in a horizontal stack. So these are the, you know, there are other data transformation methods available. Please go through the documentation. I hope you find this video useful. And if you have any question, please open issue log and I'll be happy to help you out. Thank you for watching.